Hi guys, welcome to Rajshri Food. This is the Bombay chef Varun Namdar, and today I'm doing one of my most favorite recipes: chili potatoes. Let's begin. Whenever you make anything oriental, a lot of your time is actually going to go in prepping everything. So first things first here, I'm going to start cutting the potatoes. You can cut them into wedges, you can cut these into roundels, you can cut these into french fries which are batons. So that choice is yours. Well, you can also remove the skin if you wish. I like it like that, so I'm using it. Potatoes are cut and ready. To these, now I'm adding a little bit of salt. and along with this some corn flour give it a quick mix well alternately if you notice i've just kept some oil to heat on moderate flame the oil is heated up i'm adding in the potatoes so that they fry nice and evenly gold Well the potatoes have now turned nice and crisp nice and golden time is to now remove these on an absorbent kitchen paper well and healthy option for this is bake it at 200 degrees celsius for 15 to 20 minutes make sure it's nice crisp and crunchy the potatoes are now crisp fried and ready now it's time to convert these into chili potatoes so let's begin first thing is to take some oil in a wok once the oil becomes nice and smoking hot I'm adding in some garlic slices. Once the garlic gets a little sauteed, I'm adding in some slit green chilies along with this some ginger julienne. Once this is sauteed and ready, I'm adding in the onion rings. Along with this some slices of capsicum Well now is the time to start adding in some spices some chili powder dark soy sauce some sugar malt vinegar salt and finally some chili sauce Give it a quick mix The sauce is ready. I'm adding in the fried potatoes. A quick toss. Potatoes are done and ready. Now is the time to throw in some spring greens. A quick toss. And this is ready. The chili potatoes are done and ready. Do try this at home and do let us know how you like it. Potatoes are a universal favorite and with potatoes of course you can make zillions of recipes. Today I'm making potato lollipops. Potato lollipop is a quick light and a delicious snack for your parties and also to fulfill your midday hunger pangs. On that note let's make potato lollipops. What's required for potato lollipops are some boiled and peeled potatoes. We need to grate these. Once the potato is grated and done, let's add in a chopped onion. Along with the onions, let's also chop some green chilies. Alternately, if you're not comfortable with green chilies, you could also add in chili flakes or black pepper. Let's chop this nice and fine. And let's add this to the grated potatoes. Once this is done, let's start adding in some spices. The first one is red chili powder. This is followed by roasted cumin which is powdered. Followed by roasted and crushed coriander seeds. And along with this, chaat masala. Let's add in two liquid ingredients. The first one is some lemon juice. And along with this, 
paste of ginger and garlic. To get all of this well bound together, I'm adding in two ingredients. The first one is refined flour and along with this fresh breadcrumbs. Let's mix all of this together. Well, if you've added salt while boiling the potatoes, you need to be extremely careful while adding salt at this stage. Because remember for a fact that potatoes of course would have the salt and the bread also has salt. So let's taste this before adding in salt further. Well, I personally feel this recipe would require a touch of salt. Let's do that. One final mix before we head to the next step. Moving on to the next step, we need to take lemon sized or smaller balls of potato like so and roll them lightly. The potato balls are done and ready. Let's take this to level 2 and make a slurry using refined flour, water and just a touch of salt. Let this be nice and thick. Let's stir this well and ensure that this is lump free. The consistency of this mixture needs to be like double cream. It should be of dropping consistency like so. Not very thin, not very thick. Well, the next step is to take some fresh breadcrumbs on a plate and dip the potato balls in the slurry. Coat this well. Drop it in the breadcrumbs. Need to coat this well and press this lightly. Let's keep this aside and similarly let's start processing the other potato balls. With this, our potato balls are crumbed and ready. These now need to be frozen for 15 minutes before frying. Well, our crumbed potato balls are well frozen. At this stage, what I am doing is frying these directly. But if you need to store this or if you wish to store these, what you could do is portion these and keep it in a sealed and airtight container in the freezer. And trust me, these stay perfectly well for a month. Let's fry these in hot oil on high flame because all you need to do is get a nice and crisp golden brown exterior. Do not overcrowd the pan at this stage because you would just end up breaking all the potato balls. Also ensure that you do not start stirring this immediately because that would also result in breaking these. Just give that a light stir like so, so that the balls do not stick at the bottom of the pan. But you need to be extremely careful while doing this. Do not lower the flame at any point in time because two things would happen. Either the potato balls would break in oil or two, they'll start absorbing in a lot of oil. So make sure. Once these turn nice and golden brown, let's transfer these on an absorbent tissue paper. And just before these go on the dinner table, one last step. The toothpicks to convert these into lollipops. With this, our potato lollipops are done and ready. And what I like most about this recipe is that all the ingredients are almost always there in your home kitchen. While you can make this recipe any time of the day in a jiffy, also do not forget my trick on keeping these frozen. Do not forget to like and share the video and subscribe to Raj Shripo. Hi guys, welcome to Raj Shri Food. This is the Bombay Chef Varun Namdar and today I'm here to sizzle your kitchen with something spicy. Yes indeed, I'm making paneer tikkas. So let's begin. So first things first, I'm going to cut the paneer into thick dices. The size of the vegetables or the paneer can be of your choice. So they can be bigger, smaller. 
Similarly, I'm going to cut the capsicums. So I've taken all the three colors, green, yellow and red. Similarly, if you see, I've also cut the onions and kept these are regular red onions. I've just cut these into quarters, released each petal and I'm keeping this aside. Now let's make the marination. For the marination, first that goes in is some yogurt, some red chili powder. Now this can be a good mix of a chili that gives you color as well as flavor. Some chaat masala powder, salt to taste, mustard oil, turmeric powder, ajwain or carom seeds and ginger garlic. Finally, I'm also going to add in a little bit of lemon juice and give this entire thing a thorough mix. Now that the marinade is ready, I'm throwing in the vegetables and the paneer. So first, the slices of onions, peppers and chunks of cottage cheese. I'm going to stir this very lightly, making sure it evenly mixes but without breaking the pieces of paneer. Once this is nicely mixed, I'm going to leave this aside for 15 minutes so that it nicely marinates. Now that this is marinated, let's start putting these vegetables and paneer on a skewer. I'm going to just keep alternating it with vegetables and paneer. So you can follow a pattern or you can just go as random as you wish. But just make sure each paneer has a vegetable before and after it. So here I have the first one. Well, if you wish to make chicken tikka masala, do not forget to log on to Get Curried. The link is there in the description box below. Now that our skewers are ready, time is now to heat some oil along with a teaspoon of butter. I'm going to keep the flame on moderate heat. The butter is heated up. I'm placing these paneer tikka sticks. We have to keep turning these till they become nice and charred on all the sides. This tikka now has beautifully scorched on all the sides. Off goes the flame and let's begin the plating. Now just to add in some more color, I'm taking in some fresh mint leaves and roughly giving them a chop. I'm gonna mix these with slices of onions a wedge of lime and a little bit of chaat masala. Give this a nice mix. So here you have your instant lachha piyaz ready which is now going on the plate along with the paneer tikka and along with this some more lime. So here you have the paneer tikka which is ready. Do try it at home and do let us know how you like it. And wait for what next the Bombay chef gets into your kitchen. Whenever we think of tandoor, we always think of roti, naan or tandoori chicken. But today, let's make a vegetarian delight, tandoori vegetables. Hey guys, this is the Bombay chef Varun Namdar and welcome to Rajshree Food. For the tandoori vegetables, I'm using a mix of some usual as well as unusual vegetables. Well, that choice, I leave it to you. For this recipe, however, today, I'm using these vegetables. Let's first cut the cauliflowers into florets. With this, some colored capsicum.
a red onion. I'm cutting these into large chunks or quarters. Set this aside for now and let's take a sweet potato. Without peeling, I'll just snip one of the ends and cut this into large chunks. Move this aside and let's take tinly or ivy gourd. I'll just snip the ends and use these entirely like so. With this, some okra, let's snip the ends. I'm also using some baby potatoes with the skin which are boiled and placed and some button mushrooms which I'm using whole. The vegetables are cut and ready. Let's now make the marinade. For this, I'm taking some fresh yogurt. I also need some freshly crushed coriander seeds. But before that, let's toast these a little. While these are getting toasted, let's add in the ginger garlic paste. In case you wish to make this at home, the link to the recipe is in the description box below. The coriander seeds are also well toasted. Allow these to cool. Some homemade chaat masala, some turmeric powder, some chili powder, garam masala, roasted gram flour. Well, I'm adding gram flour to this so that the marinade nicely sticks onto the vegetables. Some mustard oil, and finally, toasted coriander seeds. Let's crush these, keep this nice and coarse, and let's mix this now. I have deliberately not added salt at this stage because now you can remove this, store it in an airtight container in a deep freezer for over a month and use it as per your discretion. To this, I'm adding in the vegetables. Some salt as required. And mix this nicely. To this, you can also add in some chunks of cottage cheese, but make sure you marinate it separately as they may just break. Once this is nicely mixed, allow this to marinate for half an hour or so. The vegetables have been marinating for roughly around half an hour. Let's now start skewering them. Well, you could either alternate the vegetables or use just a single type of vegetable per skewer. The vegetables are skewered and ready. I'll be cooking this for 20 to 30 minutes at 200 degrees Celsius in a preheated oven. The tandoori vegetables are ready. Let's garnish this and take this on the dinner table. For some added flavor, a mixture of cream and melted butter. Some chaat masala. Finally, some herbs, some microgreens and pomegranate. So next time you think of tandoori, I sincerely hope you get a visual of this. There are different ways of using paneer to cook up something heart filling and mouth watering. And what I'm making today is one of the easiest way to turn paneer into a delectable dish. I'm going to start with drying the paneer a little bit. So I have some grated paneer. Just remove it on a napkin. Just wrap it up. Place a plate on top and some weight over it for 5 to 8 minutes to drain out all the excess water from the paneer. While the paneer is drying out a bit, I'm going to quickly saute the vegetables. So take very little oil, around half a teaspoon. I have some finely chopped vegetables here. First in the oil, I'm going to add some finely chopped ginger. Next go in the onions. Cook them for 30 seconds. Some carrots, cabbage, capsicum and green chilies. Don't overcook the vegetables. Just for one minute. The vegetables are done. Turn off the flame. Quickly remove these vegetables in a plate. 
so that they stop cooking and let them cool down completely under a fan. Now since the vegetables are done, I'm going to mix everything else in a bowl but I'm going to start with checking on the paneer. Let me remove this in a bowl. I have one boiled and mashed potato. Now time to add all the dry spices. I'm going to start with a little bit of amchur or raw mango powder, garam masala, chaat masala, corn flour, salt to taste, lots of coriander leaves and the sauteed vegetables. Mix all the ingredients properly. Take a little bit of corn flour onto your palms. And now let's shape these cutlets. If you have a hard cookie cutter, you can even use that. Shape it into a flat round and roll it on the board to smoothen out the edges. Shape the other ones like that. I have some gram flour over here. I'm going to add some water and make a thin batter, also a pinch of salt. It has to be a thin pouring consistency batter. This is the right consistency of the batter. I also have some toasted bread crumbs. Take a cutlet, dip it in the gram flour batter and now roll it nicely in this bread crumbs. Half the job is done, actually more than half the job is done. All that is left is to fry the paneer roundels. Into hot oil. Fry them till you get a nice golden brown colour. Soft from the inside, crunchy from the outside. Paneer cutlet is happiness redefined. Need I say more? I love preparing for parties and my most favourite part is making starters. And I just love going offbeat when I make them. So I was thinking about a paneer starter for my next party and that's when I thought why not combine papad and paneer together. This recipe has only 10 simple ingredients which are available in every household. So let's just start. First goes in the ketchup. Tabasco. Mustard sauce or mustard paste. Red chilli powder. Salt to taste. Just add enough for the paneer as well. Cornstarch. Italian pizza seasoning or you can even add some mixed herbs. Mix all these ingredients together. This is the consistency of the paste I need. Next, I'm going to add the paneer cubes. You can even use boiled baby potatoes. Just coat the paneer properly with the marination and keep it in the refrigerator for half an hour. If you feel the consistency of the marination is way too thin, you can add extra cornstarch. Basically, it should just coat the paneer properly. After half an hour, I'm going to coat this paneer with the papad. 
So I've taken a thick urad papad and I've just ground it into small pieces, not very fine. So I'm just going to spread these over the board and start coating these paneer cubes. Make sure it's nicely coated with the papad on all four sides and keep it aside. The next one. The paneer pieces are ready to fry and I've already kept some oil to heat. Hot oil and the paneers go in quickly. You just need to fry them till your papas fry and get them out. These are ready. So let's get them out. This is a nice combination of the crunchy papad and the soft paneer. And I hope I've kept up to my word of how simple it is. So do try it at home subscribe to the channel see you next time bye bye Tikkas are famous for chicken it's time to make them famous for vegetarians as well my simple and quick marinade for aloo tikka is so easy that you're going to repeat it in every party so i'm going to make haryali aloo tikka so let's start i'm going to start with making the marinade first For that I have 1 cup of coriander leaves, half a cup of mint leaves, just a very small clove of garlic, not too much, two green chilies chopped, a 1 inch piece of ginger, half a lemon juice, salt, half a teaspoon cumin seed powder, and now I'm going to grind this into a smooth paste. Let's check on this. Don't add any water because I don't want a very watery marinade. Let's grind it once more. And this is ready. I've roasted some gram flour in a pan. Just dry roast it for 2 minutes. Just keep stirring on it. So 1 tablespoon gram flour and a tablespoon of oil. Mix it well. If you feel the marinade is very soft and it's going to fall off from the potatoes while it's baking, you can always add a little more of gram flour. I've boiled some baby potatoes over here in some salt water and then peel them off and let them cool down completely before you add it to the marinade. Coat the baby potatoes well. I've chopped red and green bell peppers and the onions into big square pieces and I'm going to also add them to the marinade. Just coat them well. If you want, you can take a tomato and de-seed it and chop them into big chunks and add it to the marinade. I have a thin tikka skewer over here. I'm going to skew these vegetables. Alternately, just skew the bell peppers, potatoes and the onions. I'm going to place the skewers in a preheated oven at 180 degrees till you get nice and black edges and just keep turning them in the middle. The tikkas are out of the oven and they've charred nicely and ready to plate. I'm going to remove them out of the skewer now. With a little bit of pressure, just slide them out. I'm going to squeeze a little bit of lime juice, sprinkle a little bit of chaat masala, and the tikkas are ready to serve.
you can use other vegetables like mushrooms, baby corn, baby onions or even paneer cubes in this marination, they taste equally good. These aloo tikkas are going to get over in minutes in your party, so make sure you make enough. Do subscribe to the channel. See you next time. Bye-bye. Everybody loves potatoes and potatoes evoke so many fond memories in most of us. I've had several interesting potato dishes over the course of my life. And today I'm going to be making a special potato dish that is loved by my family and friends and readers of my website. So let's get started. I'm going to pour in about two to three cups of water into this pan and then put in a teaspoon of salt. Into the simmering water, I'm going to tip in 500 grams of baby potatoes. And then I'm going to cook these potatoes until they're fork tender, which means that when pricked with a fork, the potatoes need to give in, but yet retain their shape. So make sure that you don't overcook your potatoes here. Potatoes are cooked now, and I'm going to drain the water off and allow them to cool down a bit. And while the potatoes are cooling down, I'm going to roast some semolina. I have over here about three tablespoons of semolina. I'm going to toast this until it changes color and gives a lovely toasted aroma. There are different varieties of semolina available in the market, uh, right from the coarse variety to the fine variety. I'm using the fine variety here. It's been about three to four minutes and I think the semolina is roasted and I'm going to take this off the heat. Into my pan, I'm going to put in a tablespoon and a half of butter and a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. Okay, now if you don't want to use the butter, then go ahead and add three tablespoons of olive oil. But I like to use butter at times because of the lovely color it gives the potatoes and also because of the flavor it provides. And now I'm going to put in half a teaspoon of paprika powder. If you don't have paprika, you can use red chili powder, paprika flakes, crushed red chili, use whatever you have on hand. And then I'm going to put in two tablespoons chopped coriander or cilantro. Give it a good stir. And then I'm going to put in the boiled and peeled potatoes. These potatoes need to cook until they are nicely golden brown on all sides. Make sure that you roast the potatoes on very low heat or else they would be charred and you definitely don't want that. As you can see, the potatoes are nicely roasted and now is the time to add the salt and the roasted semolina. I'm going to add in a teaspoon of salt. And then I'm going to sprinkle in the semolina. The semolina is going to mix with the olive oil, the butter, the herb and the spice and form a beautiful crust over the potatoes. My father usually does not like potatoes, but when I served him these potatoes, he went in for a second helping. That's how good it is. This is a very versatile dish. You can serve this as a starter, as a main course, alongside a Western meal, and when served with Indian food like rice dal or khichdi, it makes for a very satisfying and comforting meal. So try this at home and let me know how you liked it.